I am just going to make sure that we are live and everybody that is here can hear me. Just going to reload my session here. And looks like we are live here. I am just going to turn on this light. Sometimes the lighting in this room with the sunshine gets a little bit funny. So let's try that. Alrighty. Let's just turn that down a little bit. All right, I'm so happy to be here with you all today. We are going to work through this beautiful yellow lab. You should see um, in the description below here, there is a reference photo for the class that we are going to work through. And each day we, or each week I should say, I'll be here um, once a week, whether it be live or pre-recorded, um, we are going to work on a certain section of this dog. So today, we are going to start with the eyes, which is not a typical uh, like way that I work through portraits. I will say that a lot of the times I don't do the eyes until the end, but I want to do more of a study on certain areas. So today we'll do the eyes. A different day we will do the nose. A different day we'll do more of the mouth. And then we will finish the dog with the pretty yellow um, fur. So I have a palette right next to me. Um, if you didn't know, these are the colors that I use for every pet portrait that I paint. It's just pretty much eight colors plus the bleed proof white. Um, you'll want to have some type of brown. So I have a Van Dyke brown, a Payne's gray, and a yellow ochre. This is the Burnt Sienna. You don't need this one per se, but I do really love it and I can barely pronounce it, but it's this um, gold color. It's like a Quinn. Let's see if I have that here. I will dig through my paint pile. I need a better way to organize this. Let's see. I don't know if I see it in here. Um, well, anyways, if I find it in my messy bag of paints there, um, but it's just kind of like an orangey burnt sienna color is what it really ends up being, which would be really wonderful to use within the ears, um, which we won't be doing today. And this is a Alzerian Crimson Red. When it comes to my brushes, anything that has more of a pointed round tip to it work really, really wonderful. And so here I have a couple different sizes, size 8. Um, this one is just a really old brush that I've had for a long time, and I also really enjoy having a smaller one on hand, so here's a size 3. Over here, you'll definitely want to have some type of a small liner brush. This one is what they call a triple zero, so it's super, super tiny. And uh, let's see, that pretty much does it for the brushes, the paint. There is a printable outline for the class. If you just scroll down below in the video um, description, you can sign up and there's a Google Drive folder that will have this outline ready to go. You can print it right onto your watercolor paper if you have that capability at home. Otherwise, you can trace it onto your watercolor paper. Um, Bleed Proof White, I think I mentioned that. That comes also in handy for doing highlights and water. And then the paper towel. I should mention too, um, the paper that I love to use is Arches, 140 pound cold pressed paper. And you will find if um, you haven't used 140 pound uh, cold press, 100% cotton paper before, it makes a big difference as far as um, the quality and how the paint reacts to the paper uh, paper, surprisingly enough, is one of the biggest um, game changers when it comes to painting with watercolor. So highly recommend investing in a 100% cotton paper. Okay, just going to pull my reference photo a little bit closer. Um, if you have a second screen, you'll want to grab your reference photo as well. 
And we are going to get started. Again, today we just are focusing on the eyes. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer for us. Okay, so these beautiful eyes. I'm working on, on 11 or 8 by 10 size. Let's grab kind of a smaller to medium size brush. So this number three has a really nice pointed tip to it. Just going to start by getting my brush nice and wet. So I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit more to my reference photo. What I'll be using a lot is a lot of browns and dark colors. So the Van Dyke brown that I have is this beautiful chocolatey color and we'll use parts of that straight from the tube like I have it here. But then I also love, in order to create black, as you notice, I didn't have any black, is I'll take this Payne's Gray color and I'll take some of my Van Dyke Brown and that creates a nice warm black color. It's not true black, but it just creates enough beautiful interest. I have a whole video coming out this month about black for pet um, tips with watercolor and I'll explain more when it comes to the color mixing. But for today, let's mix the Payne's Gray and the Van Dyke Brown to get that nice, rich color. I really enjoy kind of creating more of the outline of the dog's eye first. It helps me see the shape better. So I will start with this eye. And with the really nice pointed tip of my brush, I see a really thick, eyeliner to this dog's eye right at the top. So I'm just going to gently paint that right above that outline that I created. And you'll see that same color kind of comes back down and around this dog's eye. And down below here. So again, I am just working on creating the shape. Keeping with that same paint on my brush, I'm just going to paint on the corner of the eye a little bit there. And we'll continue the corner of the eye on the other side here. All right, so now the lower lid area here, it has kind of some tints of blue and little bits of red. So let's just grab a little of that Payne's Gray. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the Elzerian Crimson that I have in my palette, just to create a nice warm flesh color like this. Kind of gives more of that purpley and then I'm going to just, brush, <clears throat> excuse me, brush my paper towel. And I don't have as much paint as I did. Let's just do a nice little swipe. I'm actually going to pick up more water. I want it nice and light. You'll see that there's a nice little highlight that kind of happens right underneath the eye here. And we can bring some of that color over here too as well. And just going to start to pull some of that up and around the top of the eye. We don't want to pull it too far out yet. Just something like that. We're just starting to build around the eye. So there is an area that I haven't painted yet here that has more of a kind of that red 
You know how dog eyes have more of that reddish color on the um, inside? Let's just take a little bit of our red and mix it with some of the Van Dyke Brown just to kind of give it more of a more of a natural looking color. There, that looks good. Just gonna dab my paper towel so I don't have too much on my brush. There is the slightest little white highlight that's between where this dark line we painted and right next to the red. I am just going to do the very best of leaving some of that white in there. If you lose that white, it's okay, but you'll definitely need to get the bleed proof white in order to create those highlights. Alrighty, so the dog's eye in here has a nice white highlight up top here. So we need to be really careful. And what I'd recommend is actually painting these, the eye, at least the first layer lighter than what you would anticipate to paint it and how it looks on um, the reference photo because we can add more layers. It's harder to take it away. So let's start with some of the uh, same mixture that we've mixed up for the outer edge, but the eyes definitely are going to have more of a brown hue to them. So let's grab some of the Van Dyke brown. And we can darken it with a little bit of Payne's Gray. So there's a nice dark area here. So I'll just paint that little shape as well as over here. And now to get rid of that paint on my brush, I'll just add water. And I am just going to start to push some of that paint I just dropped in there around, but being careful to leave some of those um, real nice highlights at the top. Now again, we are going to add layers to this. It's just important to kind of leave as much lightness right away as you can. So here's what I have right now. That area is still wet. It's okay if you don't get that little white highlight the exact shape of what you see, as long as there is a highlight there. So while this is still wet, I'm going to grab the paints gray. And with the wet on wet technique, I just wanna drop it in around that outer edge again, and maybe a little bit right where that highlight is. Now, if you're like mine, it spread a little bit more than I wish it did. So with a dry brush, you just dab your paper towel and I'm just going to lift some of that color back up. So here I am, I don't wanna overwork that eye. So we'll leave the inside part B for right now. What I'd like to do instead is just kind of add some of the golden colors of the fur that kind of helps to ground the eye a little bit. It's going to look a little bit funny since we're just working in sections of the painting throughout the series. I think I'll switch to a little bit of a bigger brush. Let's try my number eight, but I'd say a number eight or a number six. Just something that's gonna give you a little bit more coverage. And I will do, hi Lynn. Oh, I haven't chatted with you in a long time. I feel like I'm finally coming back after being on maternity leave um, since February. So, so wonderful to see um, your names again. And yeah, this is really, a wonderful way to end the week. Okay, so I have uh, the yellow ochre. I'm mixing it with my burnt sienna just to give it a little bit of a warmer golden color. 
and I would even put a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown in there. I have a scrap piece of paper. I'm going to show you what that color looks like when you combine those three. So it's kind of a warm yellowish brown color. And that'll create a really nice um, base. So let's just start by adding that in. And we don't need to show too many hair textures per se right now. Just need to get that first base layer in. And it's darkest where the eye, um, like the outer edges of the eye is. So we'll start there because you have the most paint on your brush right away when you go to apply it to the paper after you pick it up from your palette. I'm even going to get rid of that paint on my brush and just pick up the slightest amount of the yellow ochre and dabbing it on my paper towel. Just want to kind of scrub some of that color out. Don't want it to be totally white. There's a really pretty highlight right above the eye here. And we will paint in the direction that those hairs are going just to help sculpt the dog's face here. My recommendation is to grab some water and really help smooth that layer out so we don't leave um, any harsh edges that we don't want to see into the future of our painting. Oh. Love your videos. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day. Oh, well, thank you. That means a lot to me because I truly love doing these. So I have... Um, my mom, so Benny's grandma, is here with him right now. So I'm very, very lucky. Okay. So again, I have a really light layer. I just am working on kind of blending and smoothing these areas out just so I don't have any harsh paint lines when I go to do the rest of the face. So I need to let this dry and then we can start to add some hair details. And so let's, let's add, if your eye is dry like mine is, I can start to add a little bit more darkness to the layers here. And to do, <clears throat> to do that, I'm just gonna grab the Van Dyke Brown and again, mix it with the Payne's Gray Makes a really nice, rich, dark color, almost like the black. There, let's put that there. And now I am just going to, with the really, you know, real point of my brush, if you don't have a good pointed round brush, switch to something that's really, really tiny. I need to make this part darker. So this beautiful upper lid of this eye, just running it over, layering it again. Um, you know, watercolor works in transparent layers, so it'll just continue to build if you let it dry, which is really awesome, because now we can have really great control over where the paint's going. Now I see some darker spots right up in the middle here. I just, I'm kind of cleaning off my brush and I'm just going to dab it a little bit more just to help spread some of those in there. The other area that I need to make darker now is kind of the lower lid here. So I'll just grab, again, some of that same mixture. I don't need quite as much on my brush. So if you need to, dab your paper towel to get rid of some of that paint or have a scrap piece of paper. But I need to um, bring some of that color into the corner of the eye and also down below here.
that almost seems a little too dark for what I wanted so I'm just going to clean off my brush and swipe right underneath it is going to help kind of blend that out. Looks like I need to extend this part of the eye too, so I'll just pull that one down. And now what we need to do is mix up the Payne's Gray and the red. It's going to give us that warmer, almost purpley black color. I'll dab my paper towel, but this is what I'll use to now kind of create those little, you'll see little hair marks and we're going to use a really fine tip. We're going to paint in the direction you see those hairs. This is like one of my favorite parts of a dog portrait. But they have these really beautiful details around the eye on the outer edge. So start to fan those little hairs out. And then down below here. If you're like me and you feel like you kind of have them a little harsh, don't worry, we will soften them again with a little bit of a brown, golden brown layer. So to me, that probably got a little bit dark. It's going to seem darker than it probably needs to be at the end of the painting when I'm saying the end as in like we have the rest of the layers in uh, we'll be able to reevaluate which areas need to be darker so it's kind of best to not go as dark at the beginning okay question how do you avoid the super dark layers rubbing off on each other sometimes it lifts the other layer off and then it, I, I think I understand because then it seems like it gets almost kind of muddy. Rubbing off on each other. So I think I'm understanding. Sometimes it lifts the other layer off. Yeah, so then it, it kind of creates a new color. And sometimes you don't want that. And I totally get that too. So I'm going to have to think about that one. So what I like to do, like if I lift that color off, like I kind of did, like I need to now add it back in. So I'm going to take this golden color mixture of burnt sienna and yellow ochre, and I'm going to now paint over that dark area that's going to help soften it. Yeah, it's almost goes opaque. Yeah, and it's... and. <clears throat> I'm sure, Shy, that you're using 100% cotton paper because that is the only way that you can really lift um, paint from 100% cotton paper. If you have student grade paper, it won't lift properly. So I guess if you weren't using that, which I'm sure you are, um, that would be my first recommendation for anybody who's having trouble lifting. And then... Yeah, I guess what happens is it is going to pull other layers away with it, unfortunately, if you feel like you get too dark. So I would always have your paper towel. I dab my paper towel all the time with paint just to make sure it's lighter and not too dark. Or have a test swatch next to you of a piece of paper. Okay, so I am just pulling some of these really pretty golden colors around the eye. And I see a nice dark area here too. And so I'm just doing a little scrubbing motions, even though this looks a little bit messy right now. It's all going to make sense. once we finish the painting. But right now we're just really focusing on creating beautiful eye for this dog. I'm just grabbing the same amount of paint and I just wanna add another layer is all I'm doing right now. I 
And I'm even going to pull some of those hairs down like that. The trick with painting a shorter hair dog, um, I would consider a yellow lab to be more in the shorter hair. You don't wanna paint every single hair. You kinda of wanna have some smoother brush strokes and just hit some certain areas. So there's going to be a really um, defined cheekbone right here of the dog that we will continue to, to craft as we work through this. But that then you can add some hairs into this cheekbone area. And then to soften it, you just grab a brush with a little bit of water. And while it's still wet, just kind of pull that down. But now we can at least see some of those hair textures in there. Okay, it's so tempting to want to keep continuing on into the nose. But I'm trying really hard to stay within the eye area for the um, lesson for today. Okay, let's see. I don't want to miss another comment. Okay, would you need to make sure layers are dry before you do the next layer or lift off? Yeah, I, I would say that would definitely um, help. But the thing with watercolor is even if... So here, let's do this for example. So I have my little oopsie down here and it's very dry. And not that it'll probably disappear fully, but layers of watercolor are still going to lift when you apply water to them. So you'll see, that's the beauty of this 100% cotton paper is it can, once you activate it with water, then you can take your paper towel and dab it. So it's going to kind of take away whatever is underneath it. It won't be perfect, but as you can tell, that helped to lessen that paint. So, um, yeah, I don't know if letting the layers fully dry is going to keep the layer previous or any type of base layer to be, you know, permanently there with watercolor, unfortunately. Okay, let's move over to our left eye. Just going to readjust my... So again, what I like to do, like we started with on the left eye, is to grab the Payne's Gray and mixing it with our Van Dyke Brown. And I still have my really nice pointed round number three. So I see a really dark shape in this dog's eye. So right on that upper lid, I have more paint, less water. So I have more control of where I'm placing that. But yeah, let's paint right along the left side of the top and bottom. I paint really slow when it comes to creating these types of details. So don't feel rushed. Okay. Let's see. I don't see the darkness connecting as much. So you'll see those dark shapes on the top, left, and bottom that I just painted. You won't see it on quite as dark on the right side. So I'll leave that like that. Next one I wanna do is just add water to my brush and dab my paper towel. And I wanna add a little bit of red. So I have kind of that same mixture, but with red now. I'll dab my paper towel again. And that's what's going to create the lower lid. So I'll paint a little bit of that out there. I'll pull this up here. So I have a dark line with a lighter line there. I will grab a little bit of that red and 
um, Burnt Sienna and the um, Payne's Gray. And that is what I'll use for up in this section. So I'll just paint a few little lines to help connect that eye. This is an interesting perspective. A lot of the times I paint dogs that are staring straight at the camera. So this is definitely more of an advanced um, portrait tutorial. So again, I think I'll continue to use that same color I just had for this bright, warmer brown side. And I'm just going to paint a few little hair texture lines up top. But this defined our dog's eye shape. Let's do the eye again. There is quite a bit of light in the eye and we'll see the reflection up top here. So we wanna make sure that we paint it lighter than we think we need to. And last time I used the Van Dyke Brown mixed with the Payne's Gray. I'm just going to dab my paper towel and start to drop that in. Work your way on the outer edges where they are the darkest first, and then you can blend it in. Um, so like, I'll just paint a few little sp spots like that, and then I'll get rid of that paint on my brush, and I'll just pull it in towards the center. I just don't wanna make it too dark right away. Of like a <laughs> a grayish color right now but while I have that wet I'll grab a little bit more of that darker color that I had mixed up and let's just drop it in I love the way that that kind of expands on its own this layer that I'm painting on top of doesn't have a lot of water it's not super wet so it's not going to expand as much so I'm able to control where that's going. I'll just kind of add there, a little bit of darkness there. And I won't do too much. I'm just going to leave it at that for right now. Like we did for this eye, let's start to ground it with the yellow and the gold colors. So I'm switching back to a bigger brush, the size eight. That was a mixture of the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna color. This gives it more of a golden. And I'm going to put a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown in there too. And dab your paper towel, don't want it too dark. Let's start in the darkest area I do see, which is right here where the kind of the nose is starting to overlap. Add some there. I love to paint in the direction that you see the hairs. There's some that kind of go right. There's a nice warm spot right above that lid of the eye there. And then right there in the triangle part of the eye, and then some down below here. Let's stab our paper towel, get rid of that paint on our brush. I just want to pull some of it up. In the reference photo, you'll see kind of like um, how the nose creates these really pretty creases even though this dog doesn't really have I think it's just kind of helping to define the eyebrows so we'll add some there smooth some out there 
And then this is going to be an important little spot here is you'll see this little hairline. I don't have it um, drawn out on our outline here because it's pretty light, but we just want to define how the nose comes down like that. All right, so again, I'm just going to get rid of the paint on my brush because the paint that's on the paper is still wet and I will be able to then kind of smooth that out, even grab more water. Again, just kind of scrubbing at this helps to smooth those areas out. There's another pretty little ridge line here, but it's more in the brown, so that same mixture we had, let's just add a little bit more Van Dyke Brown to it. And a really, really light amount right there. And then there's a really pretty highlight here, so I think I'll preserve and just leave that, let that be. I can always add more later. Even though I'm just doing the eye right now, it's so tempting to work my way down, but I just want to show a little bit of the facial structure around the eye. And I'm just still smoothing some of those areas out. I think I might have even gone a little heavy right here for darkness. Um, for how light and bright it is. So I'll just take my brush and see if I can lift some of that out. That'll be a good spot where I can use the um, Bleed Proof White at the end to really bring out the highlight. I'll go ahead and just smooth some of that in. So here I have um, that eye is not quite done yet. I want to add some more details how we did over here. Let's grab a smaller brush again, my three. And at this point, I just want to darken some areas. So the Paints Gray and Van Dyke Brown mixture again. Not too much water, so I have some control. This part of the lid could be a little bit bigger. Looks like I need to really darken the bottom half here. And I can see that I need a little bit of a lighter black area there, so I will get rid of some of the paint on my brush in just a second. Get rid of that paint and just paint some of those little tiny hairs. And then add some to the bottom here. Let's wet my um, wet my paintbrush here. Again, I don't really have paint on my brush. I'm just helping to kind of scrub some of those hairs that I just painted just to help soften them a little bit. And as you can see, the thing that we're missing on this side is that same warm colors that we have on this right eye here, or our right side. That warm is from the Burnt Sienna. I'll put a little bit of the yellow ochre in there. And I'll dab my paper towel. And let's just add some right over top, some of those dark areas. <laughs> you might be able to hear Mr. Benny in the background. I think he's very tired today. 
All right, going to smooth some of those But again, the trick is to not overwork areas too much because we can always go back. Once we get more of this painting in, we'll be able to see where some areas need to be darker. This is really fun for me to take a step back and focus on certain areas more at once versus kind of, you know, starting. What I usually do is start with the ears and then work my way into the eyes. So this is definitely a new exercise for me. And this is going to be a nice, really light area here. Just kind of run some water. So when you paint, it is, like I, I have mentioned this already, but this is a lot lighter than what I'm seeing within the reference photo, but it helps to really bring the life and the sparkle to the eyes instead of making them too dark and muddy. I think that's what I've really learned over all these um, years of doing a lot of portraits is that you really have to take a step back and not apply as much paint, and especially in the beginning of the painting, just to give it some breathing room because once you apply too much paint with watercolor it's really hard to bring it back and get rid of it and the bleed proof white can only do so much with lightning areas okay i think while i'm here i'll go ahead and just finish some of the bridge of the nose just to help it make a little more sense but then um in another tutorial of the series we'll focus mostly on the nose so i'm just gonna kind of paint this little area, just help connect. And I'll move back to my size eight, a little bit bigger, just to get a little bit softer brush strokes. And with the uh, Van Dyke Brown mixed with a little bit of the uh, yellow ochre and that, very little on my brush because there's not a whole lot here. There's a really pretty um, little shape but you'll see that kind of goes there. And we want to leave a nice little white highlight here. That is what helps define the nose before it overlaps into the eye. Let's get rid of that paint on my brush. Really have like nothing left on it. And I'm just going to scrub and it helps to smooth that out. bring some of that color up top here but a lot of this dog will be left with the white of the paper for how light and bright it is in those areas of the forehead and the nose I'm just going to take a, a step back here just so I can kind of evaluate where areas of the eye might need a little bit more color. I think what I want to do is just add in a little bit. You'll see in the, in the reference photo, it's a little more, it's almost like true burnt sienna color. There's these really beautiful warm golden browns or burnt oranges almost. So just going to grab some of that. Dab my paper towel again. There's this really, really pretty ridge right there. It's kind of like the upper part of the eyelid. And then just bring some of them in. And then there's a nice, pretty little area here of that same color. do like to just kind of use that same color on my brush in areas that I see while I have it on my brush instead of having to remix if it works out. I'm 
Okay, so there's that. Grab a little bit more for this side here. Yeah, if anybody has any questions too, I'll be here for just like a couple more minutes since we're almost done with the eyes. Happy to help answer. Yeah, had some great questions already um, with lifting paint and softening it without creating too muddy of an area. I know that's like super tricky and I don't even know if I answered it very well. <laughs> Um, yeah, but if you have questions, I will do my best to help answer. We definitely got started with one of the hardest parts of a painting. I still have, I'm using whatever little paint I have on my brush picking up a little bit more water, but I'm just going to soften that a little bit there. Looks like there's an upper lid. Switch to my bigger brush to help blend that in with more water. Okay. I normally would take the, wherever this is, there it is, Blee Proof White. I would normally take this and use it within the highlighted hairs here. The only reason why I'm hesitant to do it so soon is this is not a paint that, I mean, it's not watercolor per se. So now I'm restricted when I go back if I ever wanted to add more watercolor into the areas of the bleed proof white it's this is an opaque paint so it's just not going to allow me to color mix or blend things as well but for example I don't think I'll come back to touch this area again if you need to brighten the little area right above the eye there you can do that See how much that helps it pop. I'm using my really tiny triple zero to get an even um, sharper, pointier edge. Spin your brush on like your paper towel or in your palette here. That really helps. Okay, there's a little bit there. Now, if you lost, there's like tiny little highlights in the corner of the eye if you lost any. You could use your Bleed Proof White to do that. Bring them back in. You can add a little bit of that, just a few little speckles down below in the flesh of the eye there. Sometimes I'll take my finger and I'll blot it if I feel like I have too much. Let's see in this eye here, just a little bit up top for the highlights. Let's see there. <laughs> okay, so here I'll just add a few more down here because in the reference photo they are very distinct, these little hairs down. Now, I just love this Blee Proof White. I think it totally, once I started using it, elevated my work to be more realistic. which is definitely the um, style that I love to go for is more in the realism side. So adding a little bit, you don't wanna add this bleed proof white everywhere, just enough to show the texture in the brightest, lightest areas, and then just kind of let that blend into the other light areas. So you can take your finger if it's still wet and just soften. Okay, I think that about does it. Again, we'll probably revisit these eyes in the future weeks as we start to craft some other areas. It really helps to now know our darkest darks and how we'll be able to compare. Of course, the nostrils are super dark and where like this part of the tongue meets the top of the mouth. 
super dark. So now we'll start to see where our darkest darks are and how they're all going to relate to each other to create more of a cohesive um, piece in the end. All right, so I thank you guys so much for being here. Hi, Lisa, join late, look forward to watching. Oh, yay, and I can't wait to see um, if you guys are following along. Um, you can wait until the end of the painting or you could start sharing um, anywhere. If you're on social media, tag me at Windswept Design Studio. I'd love to see the progress. And I am so glad to be back painting with you all. I will have two videos coming out every week. Um, this is the first one, and then we'll have two videos next week covering um, not only, so one week, one video a week will be a part of the series, and then there will be another video that speaks to more of a watercolor pet portrait tip, such as black fur. Um, I have another video helping um, show you how I like to fix reference photos if the reference photo is a little dark and how to earn more money from your pet portrait business. I have a I have a really fun month lineup for you guys. So uh, stay tuned, hit subscribe if you haven't, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much for being here.